can start trying to uh, log on to either uh, the radiology Git, uh, which is this address here. Um, and if you're having problems, um, uh, Reese from IT, who's, who set up um, this, is on the line. She, uh, they can help us out. And then, um, uh, or you can go through uh, a GitHub. So I'll, I'll run through just like what I've converged on for some sort of basic workflow and, and um, want you guys to, to follow along as, as you can. I think it'll be, it's helpful just to like, just punch in the keys, so. Um, yeah, either. You should have, uh, should be set up for uh, an account on this, uh, the radiology get server. Um, if not, just let me know. Or alternatively, you can sign up for, for GitHub while we're going through this, and do things through there. Um, yeah, there's a, so I can show you, uh, there's, so each group or sometimes they're called organizations, but I think, um, depending on what service there's, uh, the members of that organization. And so you want to be, this is kind of a silly one cause I'm the only member <laughs> I was kind of playing around here. Um, you want to be added as a, you know, some level here to the to the group or the organization uh there's also options within individual projects to be added as a as a collaborator so you just have to request somebody who is a has administrative privileges on that to uh, to add you um so okay why don't we uh, that note we're jumping a little ahead of where i was gonna get to but uh, <laughs> um <laughs> So um, I'm going to get started here. Um, uh, so the, the topic, obviously, today is, is Git, um, which is uh, at its core, it's like a version control, which means it's going to keep track of uh, changes you made to documents, whether it's mostly, it's mostly used for like code of some form, but you can use it for actually any type of a uh, document you might have, writings, uh, presentations, of, uh, even data that may be getting uh, modified. Um, and uh, the other thing that it really supports, um, and which was another reason I really wanted to, to get at least uh, some of us here starting to use this, is it's really good as like a shared development uh, platform. So you have multiple people who might be using some shared base of code. Uh, it's really built for, for doing stuff like that, to have uh, multiple people working on the same um, set of documents uh, and tries, it, tr uh, it tries its best to, if two people have changed the same thing and it's, it'll try its best to, to merge things nicely. It doesn't always work. Uh, it's probably one of places where it get, gets the, the nastiest is can be in some of this um, shared development stuff, but yeah, it's, it, Hopefully in the end, it should be worth it. Um, the other thing you should understand from the start, uh, so, well, okay, let me make one more point about this top bullet here. Um, the one thing I like about uh, a Git and, and, or any sort of version control is you always have the old version. So you, you don't have to be scared to make a change, to commit it, to put it in there. You always can look back uh, and figure out what you did. You can revert back to that old version if you don't like it. Um, and uh, you know, there's, I'll even show like branches where you could create a sort of a sandbox type copy where you can just mess around with 
something as much as you want, keep a version that's an all within this, you know, this system, which is formalized, it's designed to do this type of thing. Um, so we'll go through some of these points as we go, go along here, but uh, uh, it's also a distributed system. Okay, so it kind of looks like when we'll go through the, the, the web platforms here, uh, for example, you know, um, let me go back. It, it looks like it kind of has the appearance of, oh, well, this is where everything is stored, and then I'm going to take a version to my computer and then, you know, push it back there. But actually, each copy of the repository or the project is self contained. Um, so it's this distributed system. Um, so you don't need to be connected uh, to be making updates and uh, making, uh, and committing them. You don't need to be connected to to anything. You don't need to be on the UCS net, UCSF network, for example, to be working on a project that's hosted here. You can work offline, document those changes when you're back on the network, push those back up, or pull changes that somebody else may have made. Uh, which is unlike some, some previous uh, SVN, for example. Um, and then this also makes it pretty modular. Um, so I, I played a little bit with this and I'll show an example. If you start a project on GitHub and you're like, wait a minute, this should not really appropriate for GitHub, maybe that's too public, even if it's private there, maybe you have a concern, you can move that entire project onto Git, the R radiology Git, for example. Um, you, could, you know, if you're really ambitious, set up your own uh, remote version or something. So it's, it just very, can be moved around uh, wherever you'd like it to be. Um, and why should we use Git as opposed to, uh, for example, SVN, which uh, I and many others here have used uh, for a while. Um, SVN was sort of the old standard. This is really the, the new standard for uh, version control and joint software development, open source, it's free, has those, uh, um, and why it gained a lot of popularity is distributed because everybody can sort of have their own copy. Um, and now what I've heard from a couple of recent graduates is this, if, if you're, if it's at all in your um, interest to be an industry, you're, there's a very good chance you're going to be expected to work with, with Git or at least a similar tool. Um, and I've heard of cases of, uh, of employers looking at maybe your GitHub profile as like an extra line item on your resume where you can show that, look, you've, you've, you know, you've worked with, uh, uh, Git, you've worked with joint software development, or at least kind of have some familiarity with these tools. Um, and, and, and it ties us to not just an academic uh, industry, I mean, other more and more academic researchers, especially those who are developing, show some examples of really cutting edge technical tools are doing it through, uh, through Git as well. Um, and because there's really this critical mass of, of just, you know, most everybody is using Git, is that there's then a lot of great tools out there, a um, lot of great resources. It's you, you put any question you've got about any error message, and you you get several pages of, of very helpful results. So a lot of sort of a critical mass is how I think of it. Um, and if uh, if you go around on GitHub, for example, which is the most popular um, uh, site for for um, it's, Pushing, you're having remote repositories here and groups. Uh, TensorFlow is based there. There's Python has a group, Facebook, LinkedIn. I mean, uh, these are just four I picked out quickly, but it's, it's, you know, it has this really critical mass and it's become the, the standard and there's a, a community within uh, GitHub. Uh, you know, and then on the imaging side, just to give you some motivation, uh, the, the Civic project, uh, being uh, which is first developed here is is done through GitHub. The, the source uh, code is hosted through GitHub. Um, this tool, uh, which is a couple of good image processing tools, Afni, Ants, you hear them. You can get the source code for those uh, through uh, GitHub. ISMRM raw data format, the Berkeley Advanced Reconstruction Toolbox from from Mickey and uh, Martin Muger, who used to be there. Um, and there's a really nice critical mass of things there. Um, so these, there are other options here, um, but 
GitHub, I've shown the most examples. It's just the most uh, widely known. The only, um, and, and it has, uh, by default, I think you get a small number of private repositories. But if you go to this page here, education.github.com, you confirm that you have a EDU email address and you have put in some brief description of well, why would you use uh, GitHub. They'll give you unlimited uh, free private repositories for two years and then you have to re-ask again every, every couple of years for that. Um, so that's, that's a nice thing they've got. I think the, the concerns I have heard is that uh, it is a um, GitHub is, is for profit, right? So they decide at some point to change things up or make it uh, ad laden or, you know, start charging for more and more things they could. Uh, GitLab is an alternative. Um, I'm not sure if that's uh, open source. It might be an open source project. Though. And that's actually the, the foundation of, of our server. Um, and so actually, I, th I think our internal radiology server is also a good starting point. Um, some things that are nice, nice about that, it, it is behind the UCSF firewall. Um, that means you do have to be you know, within the network to access it. But then you know if you, you're not gonna inadvertently share something with the world as you could easily do on GitHub. Um, so definitely good for sensitive projects if you have sensitive data, IP, uh, proprietary code and things like that. So I use it a lot for Epic coding now. Um, and, and the other thing I, I think we can really do that'd be nice is, is if we, if, if enough of us are using this service, then you can, and you make your uh, project visible internally. That means the rest of us, we can kind of look and see, oh, does somebody have maybe a little bit of code that might help me here or there? And, and you know, it's the, the sort of the trusted, uh, our trusted community here. Um, so, uh, you know, we can just uh, uh, show this briefly. Um, so again, it, it's, it's uh, we use the underlying software is from this thing called company called, or this uh, project called GitLab. Uh, yeah, but it's installed again on our servers here. And when you log into this, uh, so you have to log in with your, um, your campus username, same as uh, uh, my access. Yeah, and it should bring you in here. Um, and it's worth uh, uh, taking a little bit of time uh, exploring this space. So I've already got a bunch of stuff uh, in here. So normally you wouldn't see this. Um, but if you do, on your first login, if you go into explore projects, and then here you can look at either uh, all, uh, the right up there, Alejandro, <laughs> or, or most stars, and I don't think we've uh, used too many star feature much yet, but um, you, can, you can sort of browse through here and see, um, and there's, uh, yeah, probably you can search a little bit here as well. And so you could browse and see, you know, what, what, are, what are people doing here? And again, you don't have to let your projects be visible um, internally like this. You can make them just your own. That's your choice. Um, but if you have something you think might be of more general interest than yourself or you're ready to, to do that, I would encourage you to do that. Um, GitHub has a slightly different uh, interface here. Um, but again, it, it's a better opportunity if you want to connect with projects outside uh, UCSF. Um, and the, the last thing I'll point out here, and then, and then I'll go through a little bit of what's, what I've got, you know, give you some examples of what I have in my Git, um, is we have both um, individual, right? So in here, individual is, uh, let's just go back to mine. Individual is myself. So I have certain projects. And then you can also have, um, have groups or GitHub calls them organizations. Um, so uh, these are three that I've created that I'm the, uh, still the, uh, the only member of. Um, but uh, you know, this is a good, opportunity, uh, a good way. Um, uh, if 
if you've got a small group that you want to be working together on uh, several projects of, of code, set yourself up as a group, um, and then it, it just uh, makes, makes things easier uh, for doing that. So not every individual has their own copy and is trying to sync things back and forth. Yeah, so it can be a lab research group, a grant or project, and we could even do it for the organization. Um, so what maybe you saw in there, uh, so some examples. Um, I have like a library of just, I put all of actually, I try to put all of my MATLAB code and uh, I tried, I moved that into a, a Git um, repository recently. Okay. Um, and that sort of excludes some other, some of these other MATLAB things over here. Um, but I find that useful for working between uh, my laptop and the network. So I just use that as a nice way to sync things up and keep track of uh, if I accidentally break something to be able to go back and look what happened. I don't use that too much uh, for this. It's more of a syncing between machines. But um, this, the second group here is, is where I spend a lot of my time in uh, with Git is, is for Epic programming for the GEMR systems. And this is where, you know, I want to have a version of say this uh, carbon 13 fit CSI sequence. I want to have a working version that, you know, I know other people can use is you know, reasonably confident is working. And then if we want to try a new project, uh, I, I did this for like upgrading the scanners. I created a new version and I want to have, I really want to have fine control and, and um, good visualization of all the things that are changing uh, as this you know, sequence is evolving because, um, you know, the, these things are being used in a couple of projects and um, it's very helpful to uh, go back to look at things that maybe I messed up at some time. Um, and if anybody's interested, I did create this group. I thought it'd be good to have all our Epic projects maybe under a group um, there. And maybe everybody's still only working on one sequence there, but at least all the sort of Epic resources could be together there. Um, those are the main stuff there on GitHub. Um, I'll just uh, walk through it here. So I've got my... Yep. Um, picture, very important. <laughs> um, I've got uh, sort of my personal repositories. Um, this includes, I've tried writing, I use LaTeX for papers, I've tried that. It's, it's fine. I don't take advantage of the Git aspect of it too much, but it's fine. Some little MATLAB projects when I've been play, I put on my orchestra work when I was playing around this, this is the GE's uh, reconst MRI reconstruction toolbox. Um, I, I uh, worked with a student at Berkeley who put up this toolbox on his GitHub, so I created a forked copy of that. That's where you can basically take somebody else's repository, make your own copy of this, and then you can do either just use it or play around with the code and do whatever you want with it, build off of it. Um, and then, Peter, yeah, groups. Oh, yeah. Could you elaborate on the difference between forking and cloning? Um, yeah, uh, so let's see if I can get it right. Um, they're very similar. Forking is actually a thing that's specific to, it's not actually in the, the my understanding is it's not actually in the, uh, Git itself as a program. It's something that GitHub and also GitLab have kind of created. Um, and if you, if you clone a copy, then by default, it's going to send, when you push things, it's going to send it back to that whatever remote you cloned it from. If you fork it over to another version on GitHub, then you clone it, it'll send the changes by default back to that version. Um, so uh, 
especially if you don't have like maybe permissions to this original version, probably better to, to fork it. And then you can, sort of, um, so, so the fork is just happening within GitHub. It's forking it from one place in GitHub to another place in GitHub, creating a new version there. And then your copy, you can choose how it talks to which. So uh, there, there's, there's a lot of specific terminology. I'm trying to throw some of that out there. It's not, we'll, we'll go over some more of it as we keep going here. Uh, then there's things like organizations, and these have, you know, this is the civic organization. Uh, it's like, who's a, who's a part of that organization? And then this, this makes it much uh, easier to work on. Shared projects. Uh, another thing I'll point out while I'm here is I now have like a, a, when I log in, I get this sort of feed of these projects that I am uh, watching. So you have a couple options here. You can watch a project, you can star a project, you can fork a project. So forking is creating your own copy on your, in this case, GitHub account that then you can work back and forth with. Star, it's like, oh, I think this is interesting. I just want to remember that it's there. Uh, watch means it'll show up in this feed. Um, so this is the, you can see things. There's a Petamar toolbox. I've been just watching. I haven't done anything with it. Uh, Bart, um, and you'll just kind of see, well, what, what, are, what are people working on here? Here's the ISMRM uh, raw data uh, project. So it's kind of um, interesting to see there. And then I can come up here and go, I like this, the star feature is great, especially on GitHub where there's so much stuff. It's just hard to remember. So whenever I see something that's interesting, I just saw this um, MR uh, uh, artifact detection using uh, neural networks. So they, they had a GitHub repository. So like, oh, I'm gonna star that. I wanna, I wanna at least be able to look at that again if I remember or send it to other people. And as soon as I find uh, anything that's interesting, I'll. I'll kind of start and get it on this list here. Um, and GitLab, our, our Git has a similar thing. Um, so before we get into the, the demos and, and get you guys creating your own repository, you know, to learn Git and to, to use it, you just, you just have to use it really in the end. You gotta, you should try to make changes, commit them every day or any time that you're working on things. Um, you again, don't worry about the mistakes because they'll be kept track of there. Um, just give yourself all these checkpoints so you know when you've made changes. I think that's a really good place to, to start. And then um, I'll give you the basics here and some maybe more advanced things to try as you get into it. So, um, Let's get uh, let's get started here. Let's do a set something up. See if we can. Okay. So um, let's see how I'll lay this out. <laughs> so let's do this. Um, okay. So so first, has everybody been able to uh, log into either the radiology Git or GitHub? I work with all right so if you come in here let's see let's go uh, projects or somewhere I can do it up here too um, what I'm gonna let's everybody go in here and, and the web interfaces are having worked with the SVN on command lines for a long time I'm very happy with the, the web interface uh, these projects. So, um, so come in here, create a new project, give it whatever name you want. I'm going to go for get a tutorial test. Okay, I'm just going to start like that. Um, and here you can see you can again, it's just you. The internal means only uh, those of us with a radiology account will be able to uh, come in and view this. I'll make this internal if you guys want to 
follow along with what it looks like and create a project here. Um, hopefully you see a little bit more on the side here, um, but this is what it would, would you start off with a new project and both uh, our GitLab based interface as well as GitHub. They give you a little bit of a um, tutorial here actually is, is how you can start. Um, and I'm going to do it as this uh, uh, the second example here. Um, you may want to do the, the config at some point. I, I forgot whether I must have done that. Um, so I'm going to go into a terminal and I'm going to start uh, check, check uh, cloning, excuse me, cloning this repository. Okay, so I see that at the uh, bottom here. So it gave me the command, again, you should have some address like this. Um, to run that, it should be uh, pretty uninteresting, but it's just, you've cloned an empty repository. Now if I look here, it's created that directory, so let's go inside. Nothing in there. So um, uh, say you got, you know, some code you want to migrate into Git. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do this, but let's let's say we'll we'll, we'll just copy it into this directory here. So um, I picked out some. Uh, let's see. Oh, I had a good. Uh, So, uh, okay, so I have this, uh, some, some code in this MATLAB folder that I was just working on. I want to make it into a new repository. So we'll copy that over there. So why don't you guys pick out some, dump some or, or create a text file in there or something. Um, so you've got a few files in, in your, now your local copy of your repository. And then I'll come back to my um, uh, cheat sheet here. Okay. Um, the command, probably I use, uh, and definitely when you're starting, you might use the most is get status. This is going to tell you what's going on with all the files in there. Um, I'm going to show you the command line version, and uh, at least on, uh, on your laptop, there's a, there's a, uh, pretty good interface that comes from GitHub. So, so we'll go git status here. And you should see something that looks like this. Um, and these are the files that I copied there, but they're not actually added into the project yet. They're just sitting in the directory. I need to tell git that I want to use uh, these. Uh, I want to put, put these in the track. So the other thing that Git does, it's nice. It gives you these little, little pointers along the way. So it says just use git add. So I will use git add all these files. Okay, so now if I go here and look at the status, things should have changed. Now it says changes to be committed. We've got a new file, all these different new files, some MATLAB code, data, even a PDF. So then the next step after this is we want to commit them. I usually do it through the, uh, add the message to the command line, but you can even just do git commit and it'll bring up some prefer, uh, some text editor. Uh, I, I just usually do it like this and say, dash M and then give it some description as much enough description as you think you need to when you're going to go back and you want to sort through things that have happened to your code. If, if it's the first time you've added 
some key feature, say that in the message because that's going to help you later on. In this case, it's pretty simple. Git commit. It should say creating them. And now if I use the status, it says um, uh, nothing to commit, nothing has changed. And now eventually, and I would say you want to do this, uh, you don't need to do this, you know, every commit, but I would do it at least once a day if you're doing active development or um, cause you don't want to get, if, if, if you're trying to use, you know, um, one of these remote repositories to sync up work either between, as I use it, between my laptop or the network workstations or between other people, you want to put it out there to these, what are called the remote repositories. So that's GitHub, that's Git.radiology. Uh, and you do that through a Git push. And, um, giving me a message here. Is, is, um, so that's this command here, git push. And then you'll see it'll, uh, it's actually transferring some data here, right? Onto our server, right? And then come back here and, and you can see we've kind of gone through very similar things to, to this. Uh, and explore these other options as well. Now, if I refresh this page here, it should appear like something's going on. So yeah, it's got a listing of the files here. Last time they're updated and the last, this comment that I put in there. Tells the last change. Okay, uh, first, uh, so we've got our first repository up here. Is everybody able to, to get something there? Any part of that you want me to go back over again? Too, too basic? <laughs> now, this is kind of my daily workflow here. Is that's the thing, that step right there, you only got to do that one time for a given project. Okay. You got to do the git clone, or usually, I should say, only one time. Um, the, uh, and then as you're just modifying the project, you might be running these commands here. So um, actually the first thing you want to do is, is a git pull. And this is going to reach out to that remote repository, say, did anybody change that? And this is necessary if you or somebody else might have worked on that copy. So in my case, sometimes it's I've worked on it from another machine or um, just want to check nobody else has made any changes. You know, if, if, uh, if this is not really happening, then it shouldn't be as uh, important, but it's a good, good practice to get in the habit. So if I run the git pull on this one, nothing, nothing has happened. Then um, you can go in here and I can also check the git status. It's always good to see what's going on. I'll just take this, uh, this function here and I'll make a simple edit, which I'm going to toot my own horn. put my stamp on this code here. <laughs> and then if I run the git status here, and you could do this with whatever, obviously whatever editor, it'll say here, a file has been modified. Uh, and it tells me what to do actually. I can either add this file, uh, or the trick that I, I if, if you have something that's little, you're confident that every change you've made you want to include, you can do this git commit dash a which gives you a little hint down here at the bottom. And that's going to take everything in this category here. So not stage for commit. It's going to stage them and then commit. So 
well. I'll just put that commit in the log there. And then I'll I'll push that change. Uh, so what I did here, I pushed that change back to uh, to the remote repository on, on git.radiology. And every once in a while, you know, I'm just kind of doing git status to see what's going on. And if I come here to the web interface, I should see my minor edit has come and just this one file here that I touched, it's changed. So only the file that was affected by that commit gets this you know, last commit message. Uh, another really handy tool <clears throat> um, I recommend getting is um, is uh, the GitHub desktop client. I like this one. There, I'm sure there's other good ones out there. Um, and with this, even if you're not using GitHub, you can use this feature, add local repository. And if I come in here, find my tutorial tests I created, I add it, it'll show up down here under the other section. And here I can see, um, I can see the, the initial files that I add. It's kind of got a nice interface. It shows this is all that changed. Or these are the two things. It looks like I changed something at the end of the file. Uh, if I go in here and add something, something else there, then uh, uh, yeah. So eventually it comes in here and says, oh, there's been a change shows me what that change is, and I can type my commit in here and say, and you can even have a, you can commit that here, and then this, this the, so the, the sync button over here, that's what's gonna send this back and forth and, and make sure this is all synced up with the, uh, the git.radiology. So this is a pretty uh, intuitive uh, software for this. Um, yeah, so that's, that's going to be the bulk of things that are going on. Um, there's a couple other things, um, show you here. So, um, say I want to come in here, I'm on, now I'm logged into the, uh, the SES network and I'm going to check out the same project over here. Okay. And so now I've got uh, another version of this, but now I'm logged into the SES network. I can go change my files. I can spell. Uh, and Yeah, change my mind. I'm going to commit that. Okay. And I'll push that back onto the server. So this is sort of my regular workflow here. Um, so now I've actually got two versions of this. And this is where uh, uh, things can get a little messy. So um, now I'm coming back to my laptop version here. Let's say I go edit the same file. And I make what might be here a conflicting change. So before, you know, I said I'm not so sure. Here I say I'm very sure. Uh, 
you know, very bipolar, I guess. Um, and keep in mind, I did not do a get poll this time. Just edited my local copy. I'm going to try and uh, go back here and do uh, commit that change and push it back up there and, and, and get complaints at me. Said, wait, you, you can't do this. You have to get the most recent copy from the remote and sync things up. So, all right, so what can I do here? So what I can do is what I did here is a git pull. And I've got some of this in the, the, the notes on the next page. Yeah, uh, so I pulled that change. It tries to auto merge and it says, hmm, not sure, there's a comment, Co uh, conflict here. I should be able to see this in the, yeah, in GitHub desktop as well. So you gotta open this in your favorite text editor just to, to make it easy. Do it here. And uh, if you haven't used version control, you might not be familiar with this, but this is the standard of how it annotates these uh, conflicts. You just leave uh, arrows in one direction. And this is the head is the version on my machine. And then this is the version that's tagged with this long X string here that's coming from, that came from the, uh, what I had done on my, my other computer, on the workstation. So to fix these sort of things, you have to decide, which is correct. Uh, I don't know how I'm feeling right now. Not so sure, I made a mistake, not so sure. So you gotta get rid of all these uh, uh, lines with the, uh, the uh, arrows and the equal sign. Uh, save that. And now if I look at the status here, it says it's an unmerged path. So both modified means the remote copy was modified, my copy was modified, we've gotta fix that. And it tells me right there. Well, once you fixed it, I write git add the file. And then we go back here and now it says, okay, it's modified, it's ready to be committed. And maybe I'll put a note in here that I fixed the conflict. And then I'll, uh, I'll push that back uh, to uh, the remote. And just for good measure, take another look here. Um, I think. Um, so this is kind of a fun thing that will start to happen if you, if you run it, if you start to do more shared development, you have a couple versions going on or you do what um, I'll go into to next, which is uh, branching, is you can actually get this graph of the code. So what happens, there's one version that was on one machine, one version on another machine, and I'll show you, well, there is this point at which they had to be fixed. It's nice for visualizing, especially you can go back and say, well, when did, uh, when were these two copies the same? Or as what also next, when were these two branches the same? Um, and what did the project look like at that point? Okay, um, any questions on that before I go on to, uh, I'll do uh, branches next because they're pretty useful. Um, I'm, I'm actually gonna, there, there's this uh, git ignore. Um, I'm just gonna let you know that it exists there. Uh, so what, what can happen in some projects uh, is you get a bunch of, uh, let me, s get a bunch of like files that you don't want to, uh, like you may not wanna sync the PDF outputs or the uh, inter executable files if you're compiling code intermediate files, you might not want to sync them in your repository. So there's this file called git ignore. You can 
uh, interface with it through the GitHub desktop here. That's what I'm using. If I go ignore, it modifies this file called uh, uh, oops. Get ignore, dot get ignore. And if I open this up, I actually bought uh, uh, GitHub has a nice thing when you set up a project that says, do you want to use a template for this? This was a, a LaTeX, so a typesetting project, uh, writing project. So I chose the template from there and it chose to ignore these certain types of files. And anyway, so if, if you're interested in that, that sort of feature is available. Um, and, and you can download templates from these, these types of things too. And it added this file to it. Uh, another thing I'll point out, if you do end up having large files, like uh, try, especially if you're in the tens, hundreds of megabytes, but maybe you do, like with our hyperpolarized toolbox, I wanted to add in some sample data files in there. Um, having really large files in there can really slow down version control. Um, so there's this uh, uh, extension called git LFS for large file storage that does things just a little bit differently for files that you say um, you specify. So you can get some more info on that. Get some more info on that. Yeah. Okay, so um, another really uh, uh, important uh, tool you can use uh, is branching. And branch uh, is basically gonna take your project is gonna make another version of that. Um, and it's gonna track when it did that. Um, and then the changes on either version as you go forward. And so this can be really useful. You know, if you wanna have like a master branch that you know everything's working and tested on, you don't wanna to touch it. Right? So, yeah, uh, but you wanna try and fix something or add some major feature. You should do that in a branch. And then you can play around with this branch copy, do whatever you want. And then the great thing about Git is when you're done with that, if you get something that's working or fixed, whatever problem, it's very, uh, it's uh, basically the system is designed to make it easy to bring those changes back into your original version. Uh, another terminology to know here is that the first branch you create is your master branch. And then uh, others have other names. Um, so uh, you can do it during the command line here, but it's uh, uh, very intuitive and easy to do it through the web interface here. So if I come back to, uh, and let me show you one example also of, of how I've, uh, um, let's see, uh, played around with, with, with using branches. Um, So I come here, I've actually got a bunch of, some of these are, are left over from other things, but I have uh, yeah, sort of a, maybe too many, but um, this was a branch I created for this uh, carbon 13th and CSI sequence when we were upgrading the scanner to GV26. Said, well, I'm gonna take my version, I'm gonna make a branch, I'm gonna try and upgrade that, test it out, keep working on that. Um, and you could actually use this to have different versions for different uh, uh, for different uh, software environments as well. Uh, so I created a branch of that. And uh, so one example of how you could could do that, or or if you're fixing some, uh, again fixing a bug. Well, let's go back to our tutorial and let me create a branch here. You can do this through here and create a new, a new branch. And um, uh, I've seen a lot of projects will do, you know, divide up branches. Like you want to add uh, some feature, like you want to do some new stuff, or and they'll do it in this format. Um, so you can do something like this. And what it did, uh, you caught that as it took the master version and it made a copy in this, within the repository uh, called feature new stuff. 
So now I want to come over here. I want to edit that. One thing you'll notice, so there's this command called git branch. And this is going to tell you <clears throat> what branch you're on. Right now, all that my repository knows is about uh, one branch. Uh, and even this is the remote copy. It only knows about one branch there. So what I'm going to have to do is do the git pull to get the information from that I created through the web interface. Now it's figured out that there's a new branch. Uh, so I run this git branch at A. It shows me all of them, or I remember the name. And now I'm going to do a git checkout in the branch. Name. Okay. Um, now I've gotten uh, a little bit in trouble with this a few times, um, where I've done it like this. So I've created a branch, uh, and let's so we can go through the. Um, and but if like I look in my finder, it's still the same folder, right? Um, and. Uh, if you're not careful and check which branch you're on when you start to do something, like I have to remember, was I on, you know, was I working on the DB26 version in this folder for Epic or the DB25 or things like that? And I've gotten in trouble with this more than once. Uh, another strategy you could do here is I could say what I'm going to do. Uh, is I'm going to make a new directory. I'm going to make two copies um, of my Git tutorial project here. So I'm going to make one call, you know, just with the same name and one that has some name that indicates that this is the, I'm going to use this for the branch copy. This is a little more like a, a SVN or I know how some of us sort of ad hoc uh, manage our code of just putting it in separate directories, right? Um, but what I would need to do here is, uh, <clears throat> is I would want to copy this link here. I'm going to run, I'm going to go into, uh, or sorry, I can do, uh, do it like this. So I'm going to clone. So basically what that means to create a new copy of the, uh, um, the repository, but now I'm going to tell it to clone it into this different directory. Okay. So what I would do here is I'd, in my original one, I check out the master copy and then say when I'm working on things in the master, I'd do it there or a certain branch. And then I go into the other folder and you're going to see it actually doesn't even uh, know about the new branch, but I know what it's called. And now I'm going to be on my, my new branch in a different folder here. So I, you know, that's kind of a style thing. It's up to you what, what works, but, and I've gotten burned um, by within branching. So let's go ahead in here and make some more changes. You know what, this, the new stuff is really, this is not, this is not valuable here. That's what I've decided. Um, so I'm gonna make some changes, I say, well, commit that change um, this tells me the status well I'm ahead of the uh, the version that's the on the git radiology so I'm gonna push that over there and now what you can do with the branches is it's actually outlining it for you right here so you can create what's called a merge or a pull request um, which is to take those changes that you made in this branch copy and try and bring them then back into your 
your master copy. So you fix something, you've added a new feature, you want to bring it back in. You can copy and paste this link, or since I've already uh, uh, got, uh, got the website up here, I can see it's actually giving me a, um, a create merge request option up here. I'm going to go through it another place just so you see where it is. Another thing is this is where you can find your branches right here. So if you want to browse the code online, but there's this uh, section here called merge requests. So you can either do this is the default or just in general, you come here, create a merge request, you select my new stuff branch. I'm going to push this back into the master. And there's a few steps. Um, it's going to go through here. Um, this is a lot of this is for really making sure you want to do this. You can, you can make it assigned to a person in the group if you want to say, hey, you should you know, merge this or approve this request, basically. Uh, at the bottom here, I can actually look at all the changes in the code that happened in this branch. And it's doing all these comparisons that allow you to see and maybe double check what's what's going on. And uh, you can go through a little bit more at your leisure, but I'm going to create this merge request. And now that request has to be approved. And so it actually uh, drops you right into the, uh, if I go into merge request, there's one that's open. Click on that. And I'm going to go, well, what happened here? Somebody said they fixed the code. Trustworthy source said they fixed the code. And this is what they did. That looks fine to me. I'm going to merge. I could even do this option to remove that source branch if I thought I was done with it. Just clean things up. So I'll just do the merge for now. Um, and then it always feels like a great sense of accomplishment because you've got like, oh, now I merged. You've got it listed as one here. I was good. Um, and then I think this will, yeah, and this, this will also show up on this little graph here. So this is where feature new stuff took off from the master range here. And then I, this is when I push them back together. And you click around a lot of these things here, you can see, uh, you know, specifically what the comments are and things like that. And you can look at, uh, you know, look at differences and there's, those, there's just a lot of ways to, to figure out what's going on through this. Um, so again, I've got this documentation here. I put this up, uh, I tried to put this up under uh, uh, my, my group website under educational materials, these slides. So if you wanna come back and, and reference these and also we're recording the, the lecture here. So we'll have all that so you can come back to this. And th this is what I was suggesting of uh, you could, how you could uh, you know, organize into um, different uh, copies, basically clone different versions of the repository. That helps. Um, and merging, okay. fixing conflicts we covered. Um, so um, let's try and wrap up in about five minutes here. Um, I think most of the rest of the stuff I'll just go through on the slides here. Um, this is more probably a later on thing that you can do. But again, like I said, you, each re repository is self-contained. And say you've worked on something in Git.radiology um, and you want to move, move it out to GitHub. You're like, I'm ready to share this uh, with the world or your friend uh, some, at some other institution. So this is what I'm outlining here, is that uh, to do that, I would go to uh, uh, GitHub. I will run through it real quick, I apologize. <laughs> um, because they, they give you some nice uh, instructions. Um, I will, you know, share my, I'll create a new 
uh, repository here. Here's the option. You can add these specific get ignores or readme files, a couple of different things there. Um, and then doing something like these two commands here, which are um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my local copy and I'm going to tell it, hey, there's this other repository up here on GitHub that I want you to send things to. Uh, and this one, the version here says now start just sending things by default back and forth with GitHub, or you can, if it makes sense, you can set it up to do, uh, do both of them and things like that. Um, uh, so that's a nice thing about Git. It's pretty, it's very modular and you can, you can move things around. So that might be a logical sort of project uh, progression, for example. Um, uh, another th couple things you should be aware of and I think are really uh, useful. Uh, tags or releases. Um, this means you say I've got a good version here. It's working to do tasks that I want. Um, I want to know that this version is the working version. And I don't want to have to read through my little notes each time to figure out what it was. I'm going to stick a tag or a release uh, on that version. So you come here uh, and create a tag. And this is all, all it is, is it's marking this revision in a special way. Okay, so you're just telling yourself, uh, yeah, say this is version 1.0, you know, it's, and then you make some more changes and maybe you tag again when you're ready. Um, so it, it just helps you to, to, to navigate backwards into to more complex projects. Um, and it shows up here. Um, and I'll show you one other thing with that in just a second that gets interesting. Um, the other thing that, that could be useful for either for yourself or groups is you have this option of uh, issues. And uh, I'll show you, I tried to, um, you know, I, I've gone through different iterations of like how to keep track of things that I want to fix at some point. Maybe I, uh, I think this is my new preferred way because it's right there with the code. I can create a little list of like with comments uh, as opposed to writing them in my notebook somewhere, putting them as a comment somewhere, somewhere in my code, they get lost inevitably. Um, so this, this issues uh, uh, feature here is kind of, uh, kind of nice. Um, and yeah, this is, this is the last thing I want to go through here. Um, just a couple more uh, extensions here. Um, one thing I saw that I think is really useful for in academics is, is um, you can get a DOI digital object identifier uh, for citing your code. So through this, uh, uh, through Zenodo, and they, they have this built in uh, GitHub integration. And you basically follow the the uh, instructions here. Now this is where you do need to, GitHub calls it a release, not a tag. So that's kind of weird, how they have different terms for everything, but they call it a release. Whenever you make a release, then Zenodo uh, makes a copy of whatever is there, digitally archives it, uh, gives, you a, gives you the number, the DOI badge here, and then we'll, um, you, know, you can put that into uh, your references. And, things and cite that. So I think it's a good way to sort of uh, uh, get credit for and, and um, also, I think it's also really good if you are, you know, distributing or citing code, then you say, you know, this is a specific version. It's like that release. So uh, if something changes, you know, you, you know that the reference always points to the right one. So I've set this up for a couple things and every time. I do a release, it pumps out this badge, uh, which I guess looks cool. Um, but I think you can also cite it in a bit. The, uh, I haven't used this, but if you're at the radiology retreat, they use this GitHub pages thing. Um, kind of cool, I'm looking forward to maybe exploring it a little bit. Um, it's a simple way to host a, 
uh, the website from the GitHub repository. Uh, I think free for now. Uh, also, the BART project uses that. Um, the other thing, I, you know, if you're doing a lot of MATLAB or you feel like the MATLAB community, community would benefit, the MATLAB file exchange here, um, they have a way you can post basically a GitHub repository uh, through there. Uh, MathWorks uh, file, the MATLAB central, excuse me, file uh, exchange. So just a way to reach more people with your code if you want. Um, so yeah, so that's it, you know, just practice, commit things every time you make changes um, and you start, start simple and then try adding things like uh, branches and again if if you're comfortable I'd strongly encourage you to make uh, things uh, put things on the radiology git and um, that you make them internally accessible uh, like we saw Alejandra had done thank you for doing that <laughs> um, you know so so we can uh, uh, find more ways to, to help each other out and work together so uh, and uh, thanks to Cornelius for inspiring me to you know come up with some motivating catchphrases here. <laughs> um, there is a, a intra-rad page on, on Git, <coughs> excuse me, lab system as well, and lots of guides out there. You know, <clears throat> I'll have this um, in the, the recording of the lecture, excuse me, uh, posted as well. I'll try and send that out to the, <coughs> the, the, the listservs, see if I said that. Put it on Git. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what I should have done. Yeah, so are there any, um, kind of rolled through a lot of stuff, any, any questions? Yeah. yeah, you So the first question is, which version of uh, GitHub is that we're using? Because the one that we have in the room is the Oh, okay. Um, I, I probably haven't updated it in a while. Uh, to... Two, two, three. It claims I have the latest version, although I've heard that. Huh, okay. And the second one is about reporting the origins. So, yeah. do you have any advice in which case to split things up? Uh huh. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, so, you know, we, we, we've had this SVN repository that is one massive repository. And sending this whole thing into a single Git repository, I don't think makes sense at all. Um, I, uh, I guess I tend to divide it up pretty small into projects. Um, like within the most familiar I am is within the Epic space. That's where I've looked at it the most. Um, I even thought it would be good to divide up uh, the prostate spectroscopy sequence and the brain spectroscopy sequence, um, just because those have diverged enough uh, that there still is the underlying GE code in there, but um, uh, that, that was my initial feeling there. So it's, it's, it's a little bit a matter of style, but uh, I wouldn't put all, pro all Epic projects probably into the same repository. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I've, I've tended a little towards the smaller side. Um, I do have some instructions up here. Uh, I should have, uh, um, I'd made some notes to myself, and then uh, these are under, um, I created a, a repository, best practices under Epic MRI. <clears throat> um, some of the basic things here, uh, how, to, how to import a project from the radiology SVN into, um, into git.radiology. Uh, it take, takes a little time, I found it to work when I, I actually have to run it on my laptop, the network does not, for the, some reason, the version of get there does not work well for me. 
Um, so I run this on my laptop and it, it takes a little while because it has to search through like 40,000 uh, commits of the uh, radio, the, the old, the intro rad uh, SVN here, the rad software. So, um, but it, it'll, it'll do it eventually. Um, so I have a little cheat sheet here for that. I'll make sure I add that onto the PowerPoint if it's not there already. Um, and if you have simpler SVN projects, there's, there's a lot of instructions around to do that. Any other questions? Cool. Well, thanks. Thanks everybody for coming and I hope you uh, have some success. In the <laughs>